The fastest way to get up and running with the new Paint and Stick exporter is under Plugins and choose Paint and Stick Auto Setup. You'll notice Paint and Stick tags in the scene. This is because Paint and Stick needs to add a tag to every object that's going to be rendered as part of the Paint and Stick passes. If you go to your render settings, you'll notice there's a new Paint and Stick post effect pass. And you'll also notice that your save settings have changed. Now your multi-pass settings are set to an OpenEXR 32-bit and not a multi-layer file. Uh, this is the only file format that Paint and Stick officially supports. And when you render, you'll notice in your layers, under single pass, you have the Paint and Stick main buffer, which looks something like this, and the ID buffer. If your ID buffer looks black or too dark to see, just go over to Filter, click Enable Filter, and bring up the exposure to make sure there's something there. The reason why it can be very dark is when it's assigning ID numbers, it starts at zero and moves upward. This is all you need to know to get started painting with Paint and Stick. Some of you may have your own workflows and may not want to use Auto Setup. I'll show you how to set up the Paint and Stick Pass manually. If you go to your render settings, under Effect, you can find the Paint and Stick Post Effect. When you click this, it will add uh, post effects to your render. If you were to render from here, your Paint and Stick Passes will render incorrectly. You won't be able to paint with this, and the ID Pass will be blank. In order for these objects to render correctly, you need to first press this Step 1 button, Add Paint and Stick Tags. Auto Setup does the same thing. And then optionally you can press the step 2 button, which will set your render settings to an OpenEXR 32-bit single layer file. And while the step 2 button isn't completely necessary, you could use your own formats if you're more comfortable with them, we would highly recommend using it. Still, it's optional. From here, when you render, both of your passes will be rendered correctly and will be paintable in After Effects. There are some other buttons in here for your convenience. A lot of you may not like that there's going to be a new paint and stick tag on just about every object in the scene you can just click the hide button. This doesn't delete the tags, it just hides them. You can always click the show button if you want to see them. You can delete all of your paint and stick tags with this button, but I'm not going to. Select paint and stick tags is mostly used for buffers, which we'll get into soon. And so is select paint and stick tags of selected objects. Finally, we have add paint and stick only render settings. This is very handy if you've already rendered and you don't want to re-render your entire multi-pass settings again. You can just add this as a child render setting and when I render, you'll notice that nothing is saved from the main image. It's entirely black, meaning it's not rendering, lighting, or anything else that could be taking up time. And then in your layers, you don't have a beauty pass or a background pass. You just have the sticky pass and the ID pass. Next, let's talk about paint and stick buffers. Sometimes you just want to render out one object on your scene because that's all you want to apply paint to. And having the other objects, you can just mistakenly get paint on them, so you probably don't want to have those as part of it. So for example sake, let's use this character and say that we want to render out this character on a separate buffer. In your Paint and Stick settings, there's this button down here, Render Buffers, and you can just click Edit Buffers. That's going to take you to this Paint and Stick menu in the project window, and you can press Add to add a buffer. You can select the buffer and press Edit to rename. And you can remove a buffer, but I'll undo that. To add an object to the buffer, select the object, then under the Paint and Stick tag, just check on its render visibility for that buffer. By default, everything is going to be off. Let me do a quick render. So now when you render, you have your main pass and main ID pass, and you have your character buffer pass and your character buffer ID pass. Let's say you want to do the opposite, and you want to create a render buffer that doesn't have the character or the boat, just the background. First, let's create a new buffer. Then use this button, Select Paint and Stick Tags. This selects every Paint and Stick tag in the scene so you know you have every object, and enable the background buffer for every single object. Then take the objects that you don't want to be part of that buffer, so for example, uh, this raft, this character, and this character's sword, and I'm just going to deselect the other stuff that I accidentally selected quickly. So in this example, I accidentally selected an object that doesn't have a Paint and Stick tag on it. So in this case, I won't see my Paint and Stick tag down here. In the Render Settings, we have a button, Select Paint and Stick Tags of Selected Objects, and that's going to select the tags of everything in the entire selection. So now to remove these objects from this buffer, just turn off the Render Buffer visibility. Also, while we're looking at the Render Buffers, these checkboxes decide which buffers render and which don't, so I'm going to shut off the Main Buffer and the Character Buffer. Now when I render, Here's the background buffer, those objects are not there, and here's the ID buffer. 
Let's say, for example, you've already rendered the scene and uh, you want to add the painting stick pass. So I'm just going to start rendering here. This scene uh, renders very slowly. It uses a lot of very high quality effects in it. And it can be pretty inconvenient to wait for your whole render if you've already rendered and you just want to see the painting stick passes. I'll cancel this. We have this button here. Just click add painting stick only render settings. And now when you render, You'll notice that the render comes out black, but if you go over to your layer, under single pass, it's just rendering the paint and stick passes. So what this button does is it makes this paint and stick only child render setting of your main render setting, and it's going to shut off all the fancy stuff, uh, all the fancy effects, using this button here, this uh, render scene button, by turning that off. Just one thing to mention, uh, please don't mess with this button. The only time this uh, checkbox should go off is when you press the Add Paint and Stick Only Render Settings button and it does it for you. The problem is, when you check this button off, what it's doing is it's rendering a black frame in place of your current render. So in some rare situations, it's actually possible that if you check this off without using this button, it can overwrite your current beauty pass with the color black, which you really don't want. So only use this button to set it up and everything will be fine. Another thing I'll mention now while we're looking at this scene is if you take a look, this glass is not rendering in the paint and stick pass. That's because by default, we have this button, exclude semi-transparent objects. This is because, like most data passes, paint and stick only has one layer of depth, it is just a 2D pass, and we find in most cases, people don't want to paint onto glass, they want to paint through it. If you want to render this shot with all the transparent objects visible in the paint and stick passes, just check this box off. And now you can see the glass and the wrappers on these candies are showing. Please keep in mind that this cannot be enabled or disabled per render buffer. So if you want to render out two layers, you'll have to select all the semi-transparent objects and put them on one buffer and turn them off for another buffer manually. In the future, we may add another button that selects the semi-transparent objects to make this easier for you. Sometimes there are special situations where you want to isolate and paint to one object, but you want the other objects to act as a mat for this object. So for example, let's say that I want to paint to this wooden structure right here. If you look at the sticky pass, we have the ball on the floor, which we don't want to paint on. So one of the things you could do is you could shut off their render visibility. And if we rendered that, it would look a little bit like this. But the problem is, if you were to paint on this pass, you would be seeing the back side of this structure behind the ball itself, which wouldn't make any sense in the composite. So there's another solution for this. Instead, when you go to modify the painted stick tags of the sphere and the ground, don't turn off their visibility, but set them to matte. Now if we take a look at this render, you can see that the, uh, the ball is still matting the object. If you take a look here, see how you can still see the shape of the ball, it's just creating a black hole. And also when I scroll back, it's uh, pretty easy to see here where it's creating the black hole. So if you were to paint on this structure um, with this as a matte, it's going to ensure that all the paint is going to show up as it should. So keep in mind that matte is a great option for when you uh, don't want to paint to an object, but you still want the matting to appear correctly when you're painting. Next, let's talk about the sticky ID color and how it can be used. Here's a shot in Cinema 4D. And here's that same shot in After Effects. And I'm going to use this shot to show you a useful feature with the paint and stick tag. The ability to change the colors on the ID pass. Currently the way we're set up, all these logos have the same color mapping, you can see that on the sticky pass. But if we look at the sticky ID pass, they all have different IDs. I'll just brighten up the exposure so you can see the difference. Each of these colors is slightly different, so paint and stick knows these are different objects that should be receiving different paint. So if I paint to one of these objects, and also, don't mind the fact that this is purple. This is actually uh, just the color that is required to blend over the top of this blue color. Uh, so that way, when it's set to multiply, it will appear correctly. Uh, but that's for another tutorial. If I paint to this one object here, and then I stick that paint down, that paint sticks as expected to that one object. However, if we were to take the ID pass and just remove it from the scene entirely, deleting it, then when Painted Stick looked at the pass, it wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these five objects which can actually be advantageous at times. So just for example's sake, if we take a look here on Paint and Stick, we have nothing in the ID pass. And now I'm going to paint this logo again. And I'll stick this down. Now the paint is applied to all five of these. 
The only thing is, this is a uh, bad solution that's not very controllable. One of the things you might have noticed is if I turn paint and stick on and off, if you take a look right here on this uh, psych wall, there's some paint there that wasn't supposed to be added. And that's because paint and stick is getting confused when it looks at the sticky pass. It sees some of the same colors in this psych wall that it must be seeing where the paint was received on the logo. So you always want to be using an ID pass when you're sticking. Unless, of course, you only have one object in your scene or one type of object in your scene where this problem couldn't happen. So what would we do if we had some objects that we wanted to receive the same paint um, and other objects that we didn't want to receive that paint? Let's say, for example, we wanted this uh, center logo, this side logo, and uh, this side logo to receive the same paint. Well, I'm just going to select their paint and stick tags. And then for their sticky ID mode, I'm going to choose custom. And for the sticky ID color, I'm just going to make it blue. It doesn't matter what color, as long as they're all the same. Now when I render this frame, this is the ID pass. And just for example's sake, I think I'm going to give these two logos the same color too. Okay, so now I'm going to render this out and put it into After Effects. So now back in After Effects, I'm going to clear this stuck paint. And uh, again, here's the uh, ID pass that I just brought in. I'm going to use this as a sticky ID pass. And actually, just for example's sake, I think I'm going to hide the beauty pass and show the sticky ID pass while I stick this. So I'll paint here. And then I'll press the stick button. So now you notice that this paint is only sticking to the objects of the same ID. And then I'll just grab this other brush, just for example's sake. And I'll paint it to this yellow logo here. And I'll stick that down. Now this paint is stuck here. And I can turn my beauty pass back on. And I can see my final results. The last thing I want to clarify between sticky ID and sticky color is that uh, changing this box will have an effect on this box because they're really the same parameter, just displayed in two different ways. So for example, if I enter a 1, it's going to show an RGB value of 100. And if I enter a 2, an RGB value of 200. And uh, basically what this does, it just goes through um, the 8-bit numbers. Let me go up to 255, for example. RGB 255, but then when I go up to 256, it's going to increment on the green and then it's going to get back to zero uh, if you're following how that works. So if you like numbers, just enter a sticky ID. If you like colors, just enter whatever color you want. And uh, it won't matter either way. Thanks for watching. For more info, check out aescripts.com slash paint and stick.